What's going on YouTube? It's time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. Now today's match is a battle I had against Kevin, which was a passerby, but it did make me think of my old friend Kevin Moon. Passed away from cancer a couple years ago. Uh, was one of my, probably one of my more talented Pokemon rivals there, so uh, shout out to Kevin and his family there. But anyways though, uh, this match I am using some weird things, weird in my opinion at least. I have physically defensive Tangrowth, with Assault Vest because that thing works really well, especially with Knock Off and Infestation. Coupled with my Venom Drench, Toxic Spikes, Dragology, EV just enough so that it can survive a Choice Scarf, uh, Jolly Garchomp, Earthquake. Uh, of course we have Max Speed, Max Special Attack, Florges, Utility Crobat, it's only attacking move is Brave Bird, Mega Ampharos with the Bulky Slow um, Volt Switch, and Cobalion just as my Stealth Rock Sitter and kind of help to maintain some mob um, some initiative on the team there with Volt Switch and of course Stab Iron Head, Stab Close Combat. That, that, those levels are just pretty useful tools to have. On my opponent's side, of course, the biggest threat we see over there is going to be Alakazam just because, um, if especially if it's Mega Alakazam is what I was thinking, I wouldn't be able to outspeed it. Crobat is going to be extremely important because outside of Slowbro, Crobat kind of two hit KOs his entire team, so if not one hit KOs the Inferno and the Whimsicott. I like starting out with Cobalion when I use this Cobalion, just because it's bulky enough that it can live most hits. I needed to see what type of Infernape this was, so I switched right onto my Physically Defensive Trigology. Take that hit really well and see that he has Life Orb, which is fantastic for me because now I know he's probably going to U-turn. I know he's probably going to go out into Alakazam, but uh, I, I, I really wanted, I was so intent on trying out Toxic Spikes Venom Drench instead of just attacking, which is what I should have done. I saw Toxic Spikes, I really should have just gone for the uh, Sludge Wave, because it kind of hits everything on this team pretty neutrally there, except for one's a guy taking super effective damage. Now Alakazam is in here, I didn't really want to see a Mega Evolve, but it turns out that he's that Life Orb Magic Guard set, which is, most people would probably argue that that's a little bit more reliable, even running Focus Sash even. But that's okay, Forges is able to take two of those. Hit it with the Focus Blast, I'm unable to kill it with the Moon Blast, I mean, which is a little bit disappointing. I thought I could take a Psychic Attack better than what I took it with Tangro, so I just ended up switching out. I was hoping that he had HP Eyes or some other coverage move that he would switch instead of going for Psychic, and he does, he goes for Signal Beam. So that allows Cobalion a free switch in here, which allows me to set up my Stealth Rocks, or what I decided to do is just not mess around with Alakazam, just go straight for the Iron Head. But uh, he does switch into Slowbro, which I'm not that worried about. Um, Slowbro has the ability to run some more annoying sets now that it has access to Assault Vest. But at the same time, I wasn't that worried about it. I knew if he went for Fire Blast, it wouldn't KO me outside of a crit. And if he went for Scald, I don't really care about the burn. Gobalion isn't really here to dish out damage so much as he is to help maintain momentum and provides free switch ins for other Pokemon. So uh, that's what he does here. Now, I do take the Fire Blast pretty well. I'm going to go for the Volt Switch now, just so that I can hit him. Uh, I figured he actually would stay in, but I didn't want to just raw switch out when I could get some free damage on him. kind of wanted to force him into a situation where he would take, have to take advantage of a Regenerator. Uh, it is nice that he is Toxic, though, because it at least offsets those leftovers that he has. And he uses Yawn as I switch out, which is annoying, but at least uh, I'd rather face Yawn slow bro, than have to deal with uh, Assault Vest. Uh, it gives him an opportunity to slack off, but that gives me a free switch into my Tangrowth, who does not really fear anything from Slowbro. Even if he goes for Fire Blast, as we're about to see, that is not a one-hit KO. Uh, so I get to knock off his leftovers, which is great. Slowbro is not going to be a lot easier to deal with. I could have stayed in and gone for a Giga Drain, but I did not think that it would KO since I'm not invested in Special Attack. And why bother with that when I have a, a free switch to Dragology, even if he wants to go for a Water-type move? It's not going to do that much. Uh, I did need to see if he was going to go for a Psychic-type move, 
but he just keeps on going for Yawn, so I get up my second layer of spikes, which is great. Uh, now everything on his team, he doesn't, I guess he could have a defog user if he, if he really wanted to. He could put defog on a couple of his Pokemon, but um, he just does not. So I'm going to take the opportunity to switch on into Ampharos here. Now that my spikes are up, I was expecting another Yawn, but I figured I could Mega Evolve and then Volt Switch out if that were the case, but he actually doesn't Yawn, he just goes for another Fire Blast, so he may have been predicting me to go back out into Cobalion or Tank Breath. But you should never make the same play too many times in a row, you get a little bit predictable, and then your opponent will take advantage of that, as we saw that my opponent try to do right there. Now here's where we have that nice little Volt Switching synergy here. I'm able to go back out into Cobalion, which is important because I was 95% sure I Dragon was Scarfed, but I needed to confirm it. The only way how Dragon can outspeed Cobalion is if it's Scarfed, or if Cobalion is not running max speed, but mine is. So now that I know he's locked in on Earth Power, I get a free switch into my Crobat. Uh, he was probably predicting me to go for a U-turn, expecting his switch, which was obvious he had to switch, he can't hit me with Earth Power. But I just go straight for Braver because this Crobat doesn't have U-turn. Uh, Defog, Taunt, Roost, and Brave Bird, and it's a relatively bulky build as well. I have uh, uh, some weird... I think I have max speed on it, then I have enough HP to live some uh, weird hits that I, I wanted it to take for Attorney that I had a couple of weeks ago. But outside of that, nothing doing right there. Now, I was expecting Whimsicott to go for Leech Seed or Stun Spore, so I went out into my Tangrowth just to block those, but he actually just goes straight from Memento, which is very scary, because now he has a free chance to set up with Crawdon. And I know he's going to Dragon Dance, so no need to switch out here. And after the minus two special attack, I did not know if my Giga Drain would do enough damage to be worth it. So I just went ahead and went for Infestation instead, because I figured I could live one hit, and I thought the residual damage from Infestation would outweigh the, um, the pitiful damage from a Giga Drain. I really should have gone for Giga Drain, because that might have given me enough HP to live that knockoff. Tango is max HP max offense. So, uh, but fortunately, uh, the Toxic is going to stop him from being able to sweep through my team, and as I said, this Dragalge can live a super effective stab earthquake, so a stab knockoff, even at plus one, is not going to be able to take me off, which is fantastic. Fortunately, I lose my held item, but I don't get swept, so we have those wonderful trade-offs there. Um, once again, I don't really want to switch anything into Alakazam, but now that I know that he is Life World, Crowback can outspeed him, and he has to keep Alakazam, and he has to keep Hydreigon, because uh, those are his win factors right now. That's the only way that he can win. He has to keep them both healthy. But Crobat dodges some of uh, Hydreigon's attacks, and also it's not really one-hit KO'd by anything, except for maybe uh, full power Draco Meteor, but as long as I can keep it un at minus two, he's not going to be able to KO me. He does make a smart play and goes for the new control Dark Pulse. I went to floor just expecting a Draco Meteor, because of course I still have my Mega Ampharos, which is a Dragon type. But since I know he's locked into Dark Pulse, now is a great time to go out into Mega Ampharos and take out the Alakazam. So that's going to be one threat out of the way, and that just leaves his Scarf High Dragon. Now he has a choice here. He can lock himself in to uh, Draco Meteor and knock out my Ampharos, but then he won't be able to knock out my um, Crobat. Or he could have gone for a Dark Pulse and hope for a flinch uh, against both my I, my gro my Crobat and my Mega Ampharos. Uh, unfortunately, he decides to go for the Draco Meteor there, and as we can see, Crobat takes that quite comfortably with that HP investment. And I'm able to finish off the Scarf High Dragon with the Brave Bird. So that was a really close match, and I had a lot of fun using some of those new Pokemon there. Tangrowth and um, Dragalge go really well together. Uh, you just need a Steel type to take care of that Ice Weakness. But, um, Make sure you guys try to hit that light goal there. If we can hit that light goal, then we will have a bonus upload this week. So be on the lookout for that. But in the meantime, y'all have a great week, and I'll talk to you all later. Try not to fall for any April Fool's jokes. All right, bye now.